Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Let's talk about blown Hemis. Let's talk about mild blown Hemis and let's talk about wild blown Hemis. In fact, let's take it one step further. We'll compare a blown Hemi to a turbo Hemi. Let's get going. In this video, we're going to take a look at no less than three different forced induction Hemi combinations. We're going to start off with a mild combination, a mild 5.7 liter modified motor with a torque storm centrifugal supercharger run at low boost. Then we're going to step things up to a modified 6.1 liter Hemi with a Kenny Ball supercharger with the boost turned way up. Then we are going to finish off comparing a blown Hemi to a turbo Hemi and find out what's the difference. Why am I still talking? Let's get going. To demonstrate our pair of blown Hemis, we're going to start off with the milder configuration, and that was run with a Torque Storm centrifugal supercharger. This particular test motor was started out as a Crate 5.7 liter Hemi, originally rated at 345 horsepower. It was basically a Dodge Ram motor, but equipped with a single plane Mopar performance intake manifold. The test motor was also augmented or modified. This, this motor belonged to Steve Dulcich, so he allowed me to use it to run this Torque Storm supercharger test. But that motor had been modified with a couple of things. First of all, I, he upgraded the camshaft to a 273H comp cam, which was the biggest shelf cam that they offered at the time. That featured a 547-550 lift split, a 224-228 degree duration split, and 114 degree load separation angle. To improve the flow, uh, they also ported the stock uh, early 5.7 liter heads, which flowed very well when they were ported, way over 300 CFM, so they had enough to support you know, a much higher power level. So it had a single plane intake, ported heads, and a camshaft. It was also run with a set of inch and 7 eighths long tube headers and a Holley ECU, obviously to dial in the timing and air fuel. So run in this manner in stock in NA trim, the modified 5.7 liter produced 515 horsepower and 423 foot pounds of torque. As you can see, the single plane intake pushed power production fairly high out in the RPM range. This thing ran all the way to 7,000 RPM, which would actually um, benefit us when we were running the centrifugal supercharger because the more you rev it, uh, <laughs> because these things have a rising boost curve. Sometimes the more power you make, especially if we're making peak power up at 7,000, that's good for a centrifugal supercharger application. So what we did was add the Torque Storm supercharger. We did not include an intercooler. It was equipped with an 8-inch crank pulley and a 3.25-inch blower pulley. And that produced a peak boost of around 10 pounds out of the, out of the power peak. And we were, this was run with 21 degrees of timing. Here's what happened after we added the Torque Storm supercharger. It produced 678 horsepower and 585 foot-pounds, as I said, and at about a, a peak boost of about 10 PSI. This, this Torque Storm supercharger is a really good supercharger for, you know, the 700 to 725 horsepower range. Uh, if you want to push things out to, you know, certainly 800, 900, or 1,000 horsepower, you need to um, install a larger supercharger, or they sell kits where you can run two of these superchargers, so it's a twin supercharged application, which works really well. But this just goes to show you if you take a heads cam and intake, uh, even an early 5.7, the later ones would be even better, but an early 5.7 with heads cam and intake, you can install a supercharger on there and make very good power. In fact, you can, we've done this before with just a cammed 5.7 liter um, or even a stock one. Uh, no matter what you add it to, putting a supercharger on a Hemi is <laughs> Always a good idea. So here's our mild combination. So now let's take a look when, at what happens when we step things up, um, both in the combination and in the size of the blower that we ran. More boost coming up. After taking a look at our mild blown Hemi combination, now time to step things up to a much wilder version. And this one was run with a Kenny Bell twin screw supercharger, a 3.6 liter version. We started off also with a bigger motor. It was a 6.1 liter Hemi. It was a modified version with forged internals that had probe pistons, forged crank, forged rods. It had slightly lower compression. It was 9 to 1, but it did have valve relief so that we could run more camshaft, although we ran the same camshaft in this combination that we ran in the 5.7 liter. It was the comp 
273H that was 547, 550 lift, 224, 228 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. It also had a set of ported 6.1 liter heads, which are obviously different than the 5.7, and once ported, they flow even more than the ported 5.7 liter heads did. So those did well. The motor was run with a set of uh, inch and three quarter headers, a Holley HP ECU, and run NA in this trim, we ran it with the stock SRT8 uh, aluminum manifold and run in that configuration. Our, our naturally aspirated combination produced 511 horsepower and 451 foot-pounds of torque. I think that the drop in compression really kind of hurt this thing. I expected this thing actually to make quite a bit more power than this. NA, but this is what we did <laughs> when we ran it. And after that, we added the Kenny Bell supercharger kit. It equipped with a 3.6 liter twin screw supercharger. It also had an air to water intercooler, which we ran dyno water through. We ran this thing on race gas and started out with an eight inch crank pulley and a four inch blower pulley. And that produced a peak of 19.2 pounds of boost. And here's what happened. We stopped the run at 6,500, although it was still climbing. And produced 938 horsepower and 825 foot-pounds of torque. But because it's a supercharger and it's so easy to change the boost on this thing and change the power output, we changed the blower pulley going from a four inch blower pulley and stepping down in blower pulley size to speed the supercharger up to a 3.75 inch blower pulley. And we ran it out a little bit farther with the 3.75 inch pulley and managed to exceed a thousand horsepower at a thousand and three horsepower and peak torque checked in at 881 foot-pounds, and we had one more blower pulley to choose from, and that was a 3.5-inch blower pulley. And as you can see, we, again, easily exceeded 1,000 horsepower, making a peak of 1,021, and peak torque checked in at 913 foot-pounds of torque. And as you can see, as normally happens when we run a supercharger and change the blower pulley, we have a change in boost basically throughout the whole, the entire RPM range. So the nice thing about a positive displacement twin screw blower like this, especially a 3.6 liter, which we've made 1500 horsepower or more with um, on the right combination, they, uh, they tend to add power everywhere. So it's added not only peak horsepower, but it adds torque all the way through the RPM range. So immediately, um, we, what we can do is we'll take a look at the boost curves on these, and you can see that <laughs> as soon as you get in the throttle on these things, they have immediate boost response, which is nice about a big positive displacement blower, something that's capable of feeding. I mean, we're only using basically two-thirds of what this blower is capable of. So it's nice to have immediate boost response and immediate torque. So let's take a quick look at the boost curves, and then we'll compare the 1,000 horsepower runs to 1,000 horsepower turbo runs on a, on a fight or on a super, or turbocharged Hemi. A lot of people mistakenly think that a positive displacement supercharger provides a fixed amount of boost and it's steady all the way across the RPM range, and that's actually not the case. The boost is basically a function of back pressure in the intake manifold, and it's going to vary depending on how much airflow the blower is supplying versus how much airflow the motor is using. And also on a twin screw, which has internal compression, which makes it much more efficient than a typical roots blower, um, it, will, it will have a different boost curve than a roots blower, which is also a positive displacement blower will. So here are the boost curves on the 3.6 liter Kenny Bell run on our Hemi run on the, the modified 6.1 liter. This is with the four inch blower pulley. We started out at 16.2 pounds and rose to a peak of 19.2. And here's what happened when we stepped down in blower pulley size and speeded the blower up with the 3.75 inch blower pulley. Uh, we didn't load the motor down quite as low, but it started out at um, 20 pounds at 4,000 RPM and rose to 22.2 .2 out here at 7,200 RPM. 
And here is our final pulley, which is a 3.5 inch uh, blower pulley, which sped the blower up even more. Started out at 22.6 pounds and ended up at 24 pounds out at 6,500 RPM. So you can see these are the various boost curves supplied by the different blower pulleys. And had we been able to test them down lower, remember we were making, you know, eight or 900 foot pounds of torque here. So it gets harder and harder to load the motor, uh, the motor down way low um, with that kind of boost and that kind of power level. But the nice thing about these positive displacement blowers is even though we had a slightly rising curve, um, you're talking about already having 16 pounds of boost or 20 pounds of boost or 22 and a half pounds of boost, you know, when you're getting in the throttle, which is kind of nice and provides for a, an impressive torque curve. So now let's take a look at a comparison between the blower stuff and a turbo combination. So our final comparison is to compare a supercharged combination versus a turbocharged combination. And these are actually two different motors. But the thing is, they actually made very close to the same peak power. They both had ported heads. They both had a cam. They both had an intake manifold. Although in the case of the Kenny Bell, we replaced the intake manifold with a dedicated blower intake manifold that comes with the Kenny Bell kit. But interesting, it's an interesting comparison. It gives us some more things to kind of talk about and show you what the differences are between, you know, we can talk a little bit about the differences between superchargers and turbochargers. Um, here's our combination with the Kenny Bell run at 24 pounds of boost, and it made 1,018, 1,019. And I've purposely left out the torque curve here because it gets confusing between the two. So if we take a look at, this is our turbocharged combination. And this was run with a 76 millimeter precision turbo. It was a, a slightly bored and stroked 5.7. So it actually came out to almost very near the same displacement as the 6.1 liter. It had ported um, 5.7 liter heads. It had a slightly different camshaft, and we ran the SRT8 intake manifold blowing through with the turbo. So as you can see, they, they made similar power. The, the Precision made 1,051, so it made slightly more. Um, if we look down here, we can see that the boost response, and, then, and when I show you the torque curve, you'll be able to see what happens with the torque, that the boost response was obviously much greater with the positive displacement supercharger, and so it had more power through an awful lot of the curve. But here's the other thing to think about, two things. First of all, we did not have a, an electronic boost controller on the turbo combination. So if we had an electronic boost controller, if this turbo would indeed spool up um, to reach maximum boost instead of having a rising curve like this, uh, we could have a flat boost curve basically all the way across, which would be nice. Um, the, the positive displacement blower, the Kenny Bell, had a rising boost curve also, so it's kind of interesting. The other thing is, if you look at these two power outputs, the turbocharged combination made 1,050, and the supercharged combination made 1,018, but the turbocharged combination did it at a little over 16 pounds, and the supercharged version did it at 24 pounds. So it's an interesting comparison in that it obviously required a great deal more boost to run and they, these were both intercooled. They, they both had uh, dyno water running through the intercooler. So all that's very similar. They had similar timing numbers. They were, they were run on the same fuel. So it's kind of an interesting comparison. It's not a direct back to back because we didn't run it on the same combination. If you want to take a look at that, I have a video up where we ran a roots blower, a twin screw blower, a uh, centrifugal blower and turbos all in the same combination at the same air fuel and the same timing. So you can see what the actual differences are on those combinations. I did it on a modular Ford motor. So if you check out the modular Ford stuff, I'll put a link up. It's right here. You can take a look at that modular Ford one if you're interested in exactly what these different forms of force induction do um, on the same motor. It's kind of a cool deal. But this is our Hemi test. This is the blower versus the turbo stuff. And you can see that they both make lots of power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from our comparison with the Torque Storm Supercharged Hemi, the Kenny Bell Supercharged Hemi, and the Turbocharged Hemi? First of all, Hemis are great motors. Even naturally aspirated, they work very well because they were blessed a lot like the LS with good cylinder head flow. Even the early ones. Now, the later ones are even better. But if you take a Hemi and modify it with heads, cam, and intake, it's going to make a lot of power. 
even NA. Then if you add boost on top of that, it's going to make even more power. And if you add even more boost, it's going to add even more power. And that's the great thing. Sure, we as Americans can argue back and forth. Oh, the centrifugal is better. The twin screw is better. The turbo is better because we like to argue. But the reality is that they're all good, especially when you apply boost to a Hemi. Good things happen. Armature holder, guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.